Okay guys, so welcome back to the latest video. Today I've got Nurse Bass woo -woo, on my channel. And if you don't know who he is, his link will be down below. So go subscribe to him. He does very kind of similar things to what I do. So if you are a nursing student, he copies me. I, I really take all of her ideas and just rehash them and put them on my channel. So if you want to see the same thing twice, no, I'm just kidding. So he does just a lot of good. inspiring and motivating nursing videos. Um, but today we wanted to do like a story time nursing video where we just <sighs> kick back and talk about some funny, weird, strange things that have happened to us as nurses. So why don't you get started? So <laughs> this didn't happen to me, but it happened to a a nursing uh, classmate in my cohort and you've probably heard similar stories and like this is one of those horror stories that you know everybody fears is gonna happen to them so this guy very nice guy smart kid bright kid um, first semester of nursing school he went it was like a 7 a.m. clinical on a um, med search floor and he did not eat anything at all that morning and this may have been like week one week two very early on blacked out in, in the patient's room just smacked the floor it was uh well i'm sure a lot of us have heard those stories about like people blacking out this really happened to this kid and um i don't know if he got sent home from clinical because of that mm -hmm. i kind of don't think so but I have a similar story. I actually have a video on this, so I'll just keep it brief and you can watch that video if you want. But I have a video um, about, I almost fainted my first day of clinical. Literally, I was so excited for this first clinical day that I didn't sleep for probably like the five days prior. Like I was very middle sleep and then I got sick on top of it. So I just didn't already feel good. And I had a patient, patient, you know, when I was in this long-term care that I got assigned to and they had a stage four pressure ulcer on their coccyx yeah. and it was huge probably the worst one i've seen even to this day and i've seen some nasty wounds and she was having diarrhea it and terrible. it was all up in her wound and i remember standing there and the wound nurse and the wound doctor were in there looking at it and i was just like starting to get lightheaded tunnel vision and i have a very i'm not grossed out by things so for the, that to happen i had to leave the room and i texted my friend i went to the bathroom and i texted my friend because she's like where are you and i was like <laughs> I don't feel good and I, and I was like questioning everything about being a nurse on that day because yeah. I was like if I can't even see this how can I be a nurse like I've been watching the TLC Discovery Channel all these things for years seeing all this nasty stuff and yeah. like but seeing in person it's different when you're right there and smelling it yeah and, you know what's your weakness what's like your do you have something that like triggers you um I, like body fluids no. something that's gross I really don't but the other day I uh, had a patient that was intubated and they were just drooling out all this mucus. It looked like vomit and mucus combined, just all this stuff. And I went to suction it. And you know when you go to suction and it like gets stuck on the end, the big blob? And I was like, I, I kind of did like a mini gag, like not a real gag, kind of like a pretend gag, like, oh. And the CNA that was in there helping me at the time, she's like, is that your weakness? And I was like, I don't know, but that is. I think a lot of people weak, weakness really is like sputum and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that I really come across one except the last shift that I worked I had a patient who had a colostomy and I've had patients who've had colostomies yeah. before but this was the worst, the I worst one and I was just too. like, you know, you're turning the head as you're emptying it. I felt uh, bad for the person but I was just like, yeah, it was a beast. I, yeah, and I, we don't mean for any of these things to come off as being rude. We're this just is, trying to be like, real life this is, this nursing. Is, this is nurse talk. I had a, a, it actually wasn't my patient. I was watching for a nurse that went on lunch and she's like, this patient's colostomy bag's filling up like every 20, 30 minutes. Or no, it was an ileostomy. This was an ileostomy. So it was up higher. And uh, she's like, so like you're going to have to go in and probably empty it. She'll call you if she needs to empty. I went in there to empty it. The bag was hugely inflated and it had chunks of bacon in it like that That's was bad. not like digested really and bad. I was like oh my gosh it was so what gross. What are you doing eating a bacon with the ileostomy? Yeah like, like we need to talk about this right now. <laughs> oh it was so gross and I had yeah. another one that literally exploded all over the patient like was leaking mm. everywhere so I got creative and we have this little device where you can hook the pouch to this uh, like a Foley tube and so mm. it just drains into Foley bag. Best wow. ever. It's actually a pretty good idea. I was a genius. Yeah. I was not changing that out ever. I had um, a senior nurse. He's been working on my department for like 30 years. And um, it was that night I was caring for that patient. He was like, my first time in nursing school, day one, I had a patient with a colostomy blew up on me. 
white scrubs. He said, so now even to this day, 30 years, 30 years later, like every time I have a patient with a colostomy or something, I just get that, uh, those nursing flashbacks. We get so many of them in the ICU, like new colostomies. Mm -hmm. But the, only, the good thing about that is it takes a while for the thing, yeah, yeah. GI tract to start to putting out, put by that time you're downgraded to like telling mm -hmm. Sorry, telly and surge. <laughs> this is kind of a funny story. I had a patient uh, a couple weeks ago who was super, super cold, had like 10 blankets on her. Mm -hmm. And she's not febrile, didn't have a temperature, nothing like that, but like just was super, super cold and uh, kept asking for warm blankets and literally had so many of them on them. And every time I went in with another warm one, I would say, would you like this one to be put on top, mm -hmm. like underneath all the other ones so you can feel the warmth? She's like, no, no, no. So I kept giving her of them. Well, finally, I give her one. in there, she's just got blankets stacked this aisle. Ton of blankets. So finally, I give her another one, and then she calls me like 30 seconds out of her walk out of the room, and she's like, Ashley, you know what? I don't ask for much, but this blanket that you brought in was not warm, and I just asked for warm blankets. And I want, I had to keep my mouth shut, because literally she yeah. had been calling every five or ten minutes mm -hmm. all day long. So I'm like, okay, let's take all these blankets off. We'll get you some warm ones. So I get... I go get like five more warm blankets, we take all the other ones off, put all the warm ones on. She's like, oh, it feels so warm. I was like, okay, I'm glad you feel warm now. I'm glad you got this established. Yeah. Leave the room, calls me, and, and I'm like, what can I do for you? With that like fake smile <laughs> on your face, like, what, what, what do you want now? And she's like, can I get some ice chips? And I looked at her, and I was like... <laughs> thought you were cold. I thought you were cold. We just got you warm. She's like, uh... Yeah, but I just really want some ice chips. And I'm like, do you think that's a good idea? That you mean you may get cold again. <laughs> we have to go through this process all over again. Well, yeah. I was so angry. I don't know why it made me so angry. I think it's because she called every five to ten yeah. minutes all day long, and I was just like, I finally had it. Yeah. Uh, you'll you'll come across patients like that where they're just, can I bring you anything else? Are you sure? No, I don't need it. I finally like. And this is hard for me to do at first, still kind of hard for me to do, but if I have a patient that's calling every five to ten minutes, like literally, it makes you wonder, like, how many needs can you possibly have? You just, you just lay out the groundwork, like, listen, I got... Yeah, I just lay it down and I say, look, we've got a lot of sick patients in ICU, I can't be in here every five to ten minutes because I also am taking care of other patients. I will come in once an hour, you think of everything that you need. <laughs> in that hour. And I'm going to give you this piece of paper. You write it down, That's you think fine. about it, and when you, you know, when I come in, I will get you those things, but I cannot come in here every time you call, every single time. And I feel like it's like a reality shock when they get transferred to med surge or telly, because then nurses are just so busy on those floors, yeah. and in the ICU we've got two patients, so we're able to be a little more available. They able to meet their needs more. You, uh, you were talking about whenever you, the, uh, when you almost fainted and you were like, ah, can I even be a nurse? Yeah. So I, I've gotten this question recently. I haven't addressed it in the video, but I'll do it here. Like, the I got a question. They were like, um, if I have issues with bodily fluids, like changing a patient's brief, you know, do you think I can make it as a nurse? No, I'm just kidding. And, <laughs> and I had a similar situation. It was my CNA. Before I got into nursing school, I was in, doing CNA clinicals in a long-term care facility. And I had seen patients' briefs be changed and things like that, but whenever it was on me to do it, it was very weird. It sounds immature, I guess, but until you've never, until you've actually done it, it, it was kind of shell shocking. Honestly, it was. And I was like, God, man, it left me feeling kind of weird. Like, can I do this? You know, I know nurses do this every day. You know, but it it really is just something that it just again this whole repetition thing. The more you do it, it just becomes second nature. So for that person who asked that question. You You'll know. be alright. And it's funny because now, at least for me, it's just such part of the job yeah. that like you, you'll be like to your buddy or whoever's nurse next to you like, hey, you want to come <laughs> clean up a bunch of shit with me? And they're like, yeah, I can't wait. And you just, you got to do you what you got to do. Help. And you're obviously very respectful yeah. of the patient, you, but you have that, you know, camaraderie, that, that nursing, nursing humor. humor yeah. That's kind of messed they, up. It gets you, it gets you through the day. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's good. Sounds some good. good stories for y'all. Couple stories, just some nurse talk for you guys. Um, so make sure you are subscribed to Nurse Bass. If you're not, go if you don't check him out. Subscribe to my channel. He's obsessed with getting close to the camera because he likes how clear it I'll is. I'll find you. <laughs> yeah, I really do. This camera is just Jesus. <laughs> so go subscribe to him. Uh, give this video a thumbs up. And yeah, I don't know what else. We'll see you in the next video. Peace. Peace.